All right, 7.30, we'll call the meeting to order. This is August 20th, 2019, the Hopkinton Conservation Commission. So Don, we have REC Hopkinton resource area delineation to sign. Yep, coming around. Thank you. No new applications. The draft minutes for review, July 23rd, 2019. Did everyone get a chance to look at those? Any comments? I get a motion to approve. I'll make the motion. And a second, please. Second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? I'll abstain. I wasn't here. Okay. okay. Schwarrier, 7 Wilson Street. This is an exemption request. Yes. Should we come up? Yeah, come yes, on sir. up. Have a seat. Come on up. Good evening. Hi, we have some uh, documents. Sure, yeah. I'm Matt. Uh, this is my wife, Tatiana. Hi, right, nice to meet you. So these are for your review. Thank you. So we didn't find them helpful. It's our first conservation meeting, so uh, forgive us. We don't bite. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll be nice. plenty extras. <laughs> this is the follow-up. We've met with Don several times on the property, um, yep. and we have a couple things we'd like to propose. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> tried to outline them with some attachments, but essentially it comes down to some tree removals and some vista pruning and a retaining wall. Um, just to start off, uh, there's an oak tree at the east side of the property. Um, if you look at attachment A, uh, we tried to sort of give you a legend there. Mm -hmm. The oak tree is the blue diamond area, and that oak tree has been dropping branches for several years now. We're pretty concerned because some of them actually extend over the property onto our garden beds where we walk around so we're pretty concerned about that okay um there are additional uh, i'll call it a cherry and some scrub trees in that area that we also under item two want to remove uh for for the uh proposed retaining wall i want to put in um the vista pruning is really just a yellow diamond area there are several large oaks and, and uh well, not several, but there's two oak trees and two maple, sugar maple trees. We want to vista prune um, as well. Uh, the red area is, um, well, that's the dead, dead, it's a live oak tree, actually. I take that back. Um, the diamond area is also a concern. We have uh, several pine trees that our, the previous owner planted about 12, year, 12 or so years ago that are crowding out our rhododendrons and shading the back side of our yard. We'd like to remove those trees in their entirety. There is also a triple oak tree and a single oak tree that are of concern. The triple oak tree is actually a real hazard. I had a sunrise tree out a couple weeks ago to do some other tree removal that Don uh, approved, and it's starting to show splitting at the base. We're very concerned about that tree falling and landing on the house. Um, there's a photograph of that tree in the back. You can see that one. That's the one right there. Um, and then the green area, the cross-hatched area that shows at the bottom, those trees were removed last week. There was a large aging oak tree that was removed and several old spruce and pine trees. But the, sort of the dog leg that goes vertical along the west elevation, there are several scrubs that still remain there. And half of them are dead. We'd like to remove those as well. Um, Don asked us to pr propose this exemption because the bordering vegetative wetland buffer zone and those sort of concerns. So we had a wetland scientist come to the property a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. and did a survey of all the trees um, and uh, basically provided uh, some guidance. We didn't ask him to come tonight because we wanted to just sort of propose it to you and see what you thought, but we're well, we're, we're certainly, we certainly can bring him in if you think that's necessary. Attachment C shows our surveyor, Elliot survey, surveyor from Hope, Hopedale. Um, he's been helping us with our plot plans. And I walked down in there and got next to the closest BV ordering vegetative wetland that was identified and flagged. We pulled a 100 foot flag, 100 foot tape. That's Elliot there. And the second photo, attachment D, kind of shows a little bit better from further back. Picture of Tatiana took. <laughs> Um, where that 100 foot buffer zone is. And what's important there is the retaining wall is well beyond that. You see that garden bed there? We're way beyond that, closer to the edge of Wilson Street. What we're trying to do is, folks, at the east side of our property, we want, we want to build about a 15 to 20 foot retaining wall that will allow us to put a circular driveway and a turnaround driveway. Right now, we have we park right in front of the house. 
it's actually a low area and in the spring uh, before we get the thaw, we, it's, it's an ice skating rink. We want to build a good, well-drained, flat turnaround driveway and also open up the front of the house for additional planting. It's really where all the sun is, so we're very anxious to sort of, sort of uh, landscape the front of the house where the, the current driveway is. So in summary, I know it's a lot, but it's multiple trees, it's uh, a retaining wall, and some distant pruning. And we tried to spell it out as clearly as we could. We have an approved driveway plan that's also attached. Um, that gives you a little better idea of where on the property we're talking about. The area number one, which is attachment B. That area number one is that southeast, northeast corner of the property where we want to put the retaining wall. Backfill, um, probably pervious pavers. We're thinking about using those geo pavers that actually drain well. Um, area three is the current driveway area that we want to uh, essentially landscape and not use anymore. And area two is just a temporary sort of construction access that we'll put it, the approved apron and all that sort of thing along Wilson Street for. I know you have limited time. I didn't want to bore you with the details, but we wanted to just propose this and see what you thought. Okay, thank you for the summary. Um, so the dog leg area in the green, that's well outside the buffer zone. So I think we're good with that. It doesn't fall under the commission's jurisdiction. Uh, this plan here, does this have the updated wetland boundary that was... No, that's from 04, that one right there. It's an old one. We this haven't, an old we, one. Haven't okay. we haven't provided the actual dimensions yet. We have a surveyor and the, he's, he, needs to, he needs to go out there and provide the, the final plan from Elliott's survey. Okay. So I think based on... The the chair, just on what also is showing is Natural Heritage has a potential vernal pool in this area. Yep. So I didn't know the extent of it. And the, you know, looking at the old one, you'd have a 100-foot buffer zone here. And if, if it was anywhere in here, you might be extending you know, further in with a vernal pool buffer zone. So it wasn't Our really scientists sure. did, did comment on that, Don. And mm -hmm. he, it is a potential vernal pool for sure. Based on his walk-off, <clears throat> he believes that the southeast corner of our property is 250 feet from that potential vernal pool. And the area that we looked at with that oak tree and that backfill area for the retaining walls well be well above that so we're hoping that we actually are being well beyond that concern but thanks for pointing that out okay so I think what we need is a revised plan that shows the new delineation because as this um, plan shows now from 2004 it looks like the majority of these trees are outside of our jurisdiction and therefore if you wanted to be able to remove them you could however we just need to confirm if that buffer zone is moved further away from the house or closer um, the red dead tree uh, we don't have a problem with you just taking that down uh, it's typically something that we approve and then the blue diamond again that's a live tree you know, we just need to get verification of where the buffer zone boundary is. Okay. And again, if it's outside the boundary, you know, no problem. You can take that down. If it's inside, you know, we'll have to contemplate that as a commission. So, so this, this walk-off tape obviously is not going to uh, suffice. For that survey. You want you want a, a, a surveyed plot plan, Jeff? If he can just take, I mean, it doesn't need to be a new survey plan, but if he can superimpose the boundary that he measured out on this plan. Um, I think for the purposes of what you're proposing here, that would be fine. Um, I don't want you to have to incur the cost of having them prepare another plan for you. So I think if you can just take the measurements and superimpose them onto this plan. Kind of tough with the, with the, the topography, especially to the, to the rear of the house. Um, and he's just a wetland scientist. He's not no, he's the surveyor. Oh, okay, he's the surveyor. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> We, we've retained him because we we're going to propose He's some both? He, he no, this is a separate person. Okay, okay. This is, this is uh, Elliot surveying from Hopedale. The peer consultant is Dave Borden. Okay. Uh, we've retained him to provide the plot plan anyway because we're going to okay. do some, some decks and that kind of thing with the town. Um, but if we wanted to sort of expedite, because it takes time to schedule these folks, we, we certainly could superimpose, have them <coughs> superimpose this BVW 100-foot buffer zone onto the our current plot plan for you yeah I mean ideally if we could get an updated plan that would be great uh, if it's going to take 
through the chair. We don't know the actual location of those trees that are shown on there. That's just a guess. He's going to, he's going to, we've had them all identified, oh, Don. Good. He's going to put, put them on the plan. It's oh, going to be expensive, but we decided it sounds like that's what we have to do. Okay. Um, we actually have every single tree has been identified. If you walk by, you'll see every single tree north of that uh, blue line on the MCIS survey has been flagged with its age and size. So we're going to put them all on there. We just wanted today just to get in front of you and kind of get a sense of what you thought. We'll certainly provide a detailed plot plan with all those dimensions if that's what you need. <coughs> we're fully prepared to do that. Okay, that'd be helpful. And then if you're proposing a driveway and decks and that type of thing, I mean, the plan would be um, ideal for us to have anyway so we can evaluate those yeah. as well. Okay. So. Yeah, we intended to actually put the driveway right on the plot plan so you can see it. We're going to try to make this the most thorough thing we can because we have a lot of sort of pieces and parts happening at the same time. Okay. So we'd like to get put it back on the agenda. I'm going to see if I can get that done in the next couple weeks. Sure. Uh, certainly, if we could, we'd like to schedule the tree guy and get that oak tree out because that, that's a concern. Right. The, the one, the, the uh, blue diamond oak tree. Yep. The dead one. Okay. Uh, it actually might oh, be actually, alive. Don thinks it's alive. So. Well, here's the picture here. And the crown was alive, but it had some dead branches on the periphery. So I already gave them permission to prune out all the dead branches, and then the live tree would come under the commission's review if it's within the oh, the what? If it's within the hundred foot buffer zone, or okay. outside. We want to take that one down, Don, for the retaining wall. Right. So right. that would be the agreed. Yes. Yeah, so the commission was looking for that further information. No problem. Okay. So our next meeting is September 10th. Maybe we can, you know, take a look at this. No problem. Thank you for your okay. time. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Schroeder. Thank you. Thanks, Donna. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Page 74, Pine Island Road. This is an exemption request. Hi. Good Hello. evening. How's it going, Mr. Page? Very good, thanks. Hey. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to bring all those plans like that. I got but, yeah, <laughs> yeah, seconds. I know you sent me all. <laughs> that was quite impressive. <laughs> so you just you want to replace you your existing you want to driveway? <laughs> 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 I'll just draw it in. Um, yeah, so basically we want to uh, replace the existing material that the driveway is crushed stone. And we want to put the uh, permeable pavers in. Mm -hmm. um, essentially, we have to do something. I, I don't know. If Don, you have your pictures that you took? Yeah, photos right here. Yeah, I mean, essentially, this weekend I was cutting the driveway because everything's silted in and, and the grass, that's, our driveway is center. If you go up a little higher, that, that's our driveway, basically grass, and it's silted in. So we need to excavate all that material, even if we were to crush down, and replace it with, you know, the more crushed down in layers or whatever in various thickness. The permeable pavers were basically the same thing. You have gradually larger stone and it then sits on top of a, multiple layers. I'm not sure if you're familiar with it at all or not. Yep, so it's the same footprint? Of same the footprint that was, right. that was So you're approved. proposing the gravel or the permeable pavers? Permeable well, we'd like the pavers. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. And we have, that's the as-built plan that went with our um, approvals, I think it was January 2002. Okay, I think it's pretty straightforward. Questions from the commission? <coughs> Questions from the audience? Motion to approve the exemption request? So moved. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Thank you. All right, very good. Thank you. Good luck. Thanks. Now we have to pay for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's always the challenge. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, Southfield Properties, 97 South Street. This is a notice of intent for parking lot improvements. When you're going to read? Yeah. Hopkinton Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, August 20th, 2019, at 7:30 p.m. at the Hopkinton Senior Center, 28 Mayhew Street, to hear all persons interested in a notice of intent. Filed by Southfield Properties 1 LLC for parking lot improvements and associated site work. The location is 97 South Street, Assessor's Map, R29, Block 8, Lot B. Good evening. Good evening. Joe Marquardt, joined by Harold Higgin. 
the owner of uh, 97 uh, South Street. Um, we are about oh, 13, 1400 feet southerly of Haywood Street on the east side of the road, sandwiched between South Street and 495. A six acre parcel. Uh, the parcel was created in 82. Um, this building, number 97, is about 35 years old. It may ring a bell. It was the subject of a special town meeting uh, back in February for a TIF arrangement regarding property taxes to facilitate, <coughs> excuse me, the relocation of uh, Lichen Biosciences to Hopkinton. Mm -hmm. This is a follow-up to that process. Um, to, um, to facilitate their transfer, we've got to make some changes to the structure itself. And I'm sorry, this is 97 here. Um, we've got to add, um, to the building, we've got to retrofit the inside, um, change up the interior, add some HVAC to the roof, uh, those sorts of things that we're kicking around down the hall at Design Review right now. Um, we asked um, Scott Hine of Northeast Ecological to take a look at the site and what he has identified, uh, same orientation, uh, South Street down here, 495 here, is a BBW along this northerly side and then into uh, 495. <coughs> so the changes that we wanted to make to the structure outside the bounds of the existing building are these two entrances here. Mm -hmm. The BBW is here, the buffer zone sits here. The rest of the stuff, and I, I don't want to minimize it, but I've kind of lumped it into site management. Um, as I said, the site is, is 39 something years old. They've been diligent with their crack ceiling, but the pavement's getting a, a little long in the tooth. So um, since Harold has control of 99 as well, what we're going to do is to begin to make changes to this entire area. So we're going to uh, mill the existing asphalt, sweep it and put down a new surface. We're going to augment the curbing at the traffic islands that are in tough shape uh, replace the disease and dead trees, add some landscaping along the front to try and spruce up um, that side. Um, moving from south to north, from the buffer zone to the resource area, um, what we're proposing has no real implications for the buffer zones till we get to this area here that I've highlighted in yellow. So the resurfacing starts back here, this area, is in the jurisdiction of the commission. Um, related to past tenants are some remnants of the manufacturing industrial base there. There are some old concrete pads that need to be excavated, some bollards that will be removed. And that area will get a full depth um, excavation and a gravel substrate and then a new surface. It kind of corresponds with the existing gas surface. So southerly of the gas service to the building is the full depth. This is simply uh, milling and reclaiming and then repaving that area here. As you move closer to the resource areas, other issues pop up. There's a concrete berm along this northerly side, which is in terrible shape. Um, that we're proposing to replace that concrete berm with a new Cape Cod, an asphalt berm through here. Um, beyond that, um, Curbing, there are some issues um, that folks have, uh, try, have attempted to clean up mm -hmm. over time. And we included uh, some photos uh, with the submission. I brought a few more here tonight. These are the patches that have taken place at different spots along the perimeter. And it's a real mess. So the first one, number one, is this area up in here. Second is around that catch basin. Number two, and the three and four are closer to, um, to South Street. What we're proposing is to, beyond the curbing, is to excavate some of those attempts to fix this, pull out that concrete, pull out that asphalt, and replace it with riprap armor so that um, we get uh, a nice service that will um, resist erosion long term. Um, the contractor, Lazaro uh, Paving and Construction, did a cursory review, uh, shovel in a bar, 
uh, nothing more sophisticated than that. And the hope is that if we peel off the top couple of feet, then we can get back to a material that will support the riprap and stabilize that slope. So that's what we're proposing in those four areas. I, I realize that's, there's no way to say for sure that we'll quit at the limits that um, I show on this plan, but the goal would be to take it back to something. So the worst we get is the TOA slope against that resource area. Mm -hmm. To mitigate all this work, we have a line of erosion controls that runs along the, the north side. We've, uh, we're going to install the catch basin inserts to catch any sediment that ends up um, in the catch basins, and then uh, riprap armoring should stabilize that slope um, along that edge. Okay, thank you. So at locations three and four, the curbing will be removed? Curbing is removed from South Street to return the corner up in here. 625 feet okay, of the new curbing all along the north side. This area here against 495 is in good shape. These were the problem areas, so they have chosen to replace the entire thing. Right, but at these two locations where you're proposing to put the riprap in, mm -hmm. there'll be no curb there, right? There'll, there'll, be, be, there'll be, be asphalt be curb. That curb patch, that asphalt patch that you see highlighted in gray and black, that will come out and be replaced with riprap. Plus the placed curb that's there now, the concrete curb that's there now? No. Yes. Yes, right? Yeah. The curb and the, the, the riprap. Correct, yep. So basically runoff from the parking lot can get into that riprap area there. No, it will be managed by the curbing and directed to those ca existing catch basins along that northerly side. There will be a new asphalt. New asphalt. The, the goal is to reproduce the site characteristics that you see now. Conditions. The flows will continue to go to all the catch basins and manholes and that we'll have the same type of flows when we're done as we see now. Okay. Okay. So Matt, you had a few comments. I think the most relevant one um, was with the stormwater catch basins um, and the age of the existing structure. Yeah, Joe, I don't, I don't know if you want to go through in a little bit more detail and describe sort of how the drainage is working currently. Oh, sure. Because uh, one of my comments was just based on the age of it, what the, <clears throat> there's been any testing on those catch basins as far as if they're still functioning as they were originally designed, you know, how the basin works and sort of that type of stuff. Sure. There's a, a break line right about here. And this stormwater flows back into a closed drainage system, catch basins and manholes that carry the water to a detention basin here along South Street. This direction, sheet flows, and there are several leaching basins, one, two, three, four, here, and this runs out towards South Street. It's caught by a series of catch basins right through here. The leaching catch basins, we were going to leave alone. Um, there is a maintenance program that um, the owner and his group have taken on voluntarily to sweep the parking lots uh, and clean the catch basins out yearly. And they inspect the drain manholes and the closed drainage system when they do that cleaning and they clean up in the detention basin, fallen trees and limbs and what have you um, at, on an as needed basis. They have, and I am relying on their input, they have seen no issues with the leaching catch basins, the function of those, uh, the water hits the outlets and, um, and disappears. Um, there have been no issues with the detention basin, no complaints from abutting property owners, no issues at the DPW. We feel that the system is, is in working order. Okay, and that's done consistently on an annual basis? Mm -hmm. yeah. Our changes to the building result in about 76 more feet of, square feet of impervious area. Mm -hmm. something on the order of two ten thousandths of a percent based on the eight acres of impervious area here. So we felt we're not getting any larger, we're not introducing any more impervious area. This system works fine and there's some comfort that it'll continue to be so. So um, through the chair, the two, the locations where the erosion is happening is around the catch basins? 
So are we not concerned that that's because the catch basins are overflowing at those points? And going so the curb, in oranges that, are our proposed erosion controls, sure. the sill fence and the filter sock mm -hmm. through here to wrap around through here at the top of the slope. Oh, and then where areas um, exhibit themselves to need more excavation to handle this um, reclaiming of the slope, we may have to add another line of erosion control as we move through it. So to me, if, if we're here and it begs a couple more feet in any direction, add another line of erosion control beyond what was uh, inspected at the outset of the project, and then contain whatever work is beyond of what we're discussing now. Simply because I cannot tell you what they, they'll find when they open up that, that boulder wall. It's a riprap wall, chamfered back, the large stones, and it, it may just, common sense may say, a couple more feet pull up beyond this orange line that I have is the best way to go. I was just wondering if the, it seems like the, the weak points where they've had to fill in with concrete are around the leaching basins. Yeah, and one, I was wondering two. if that's coincidental or if that's because the leaching basins are the low points and overflowing and causing it to erode under the rocks here. Yeah. And that's why they have to. Yeah, that I can't it. answer. They are solid sections. They're not brick or block. So they go down six or eight feet. So we would have mm -hmm. to undermine it from below. There's no sign of it as you stand on the wetland side of it. There's no soils that pop out that say that the, mm -hmm. the flow through the catch basin is the culprit. So I'll defer to our stormwater experts um, as to whether they feel the design is adequate um, going forward. I would just say that I think what we would want as a special condition in the order, if it's approved, is a report um, submitted to the commission after the annual cleaning, just summarizing you know what was done, so we can put that in the project file. Okay. Uh, there were a couple house cleaning items I think in here that we needed to take care of um, that Matt has pointed out. One is the identification of the snow storage area. One, I don't know if there's an area on the site that is set aside for that. Traditionally, um, they have placed their snow against the curbing um, at 195. And now that the buffer zone has been highlighted, um, the thought process is to relocate um, the, what I will call snow storage, storage area number one to this location here on the site. Uh, box off those spaces. We have more spaces than we need from a planning standpoint, a zoning standpoint. Um, quite frankly, they're starting up and their goal is uh, 50 employees in the first year of operation. We've got on the order of 300 spaces. So okay. we can dedicate eight or 10 spaces through here. Um, because 99 is under um, Harold's control, the idea is that if we were to get Snow is similar to 2015. Some area here at 99, which is unoccupied at the time, would be a staging area before removal. So the idea is to be here in the short term and here if we get another one of those winters. Okay. Um, during so the wetland system of development, this review commission found the stream channel will be in intermittent in no vertical habitat. Lucas just recommends that the similar finding be recorded as part of this application, and it goes pretty straightforward. Yes. And then the applicant has not submitted a waiver request for work within the 50 foot no build zone and 75 foot no disturbance, so we just request that those be submitted. We we're not unable to download forms from the website for some reason. Okay. Before I went away, I went back this morning, so I have added all those missing forms to this package here. Okay. The Thank waiver you. and the uh, notification of the butter is done. We have to need it. 
Matt, does that cover all your concerns? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, again, I don't know that it has a huge bearing on the project based on sort of the scope of the project here, but just as far as I don't know if you're approving wetland boundaries as part of this or not. I had a couple of tweaks to the flag boundary and then based on the age of the detention basin, it probably qualifies as a wetland resource because it was built in the 80s. Um, it sure has that look, I'll agree with you. Yeah, I mean, it certainly meets the criteria, just if it was built after 96 with an order of conditions, it would sort of be exempted, but um, so I would change the buffer zones Again, based on the scope of the project, I don't know. I think what we're talking about is, as you head uh, from number one, from 495 to South Street, as you get into this area here, Scott identified something that juts out to the north. Okay. And Matt's idea is to connect that. Yep. And there is a pocket in here um, that is of no use to us. So to just connect add that there. in there, there's no real bearing on what we're proposing and how we'll use the so if you could do that and submit a revised plan to us um, and then I think you wanted the, BV, the detention bees and identified as a BVW on the plan yeah I, mean, I think technically I think that's what it would qualify as and then you'd have you know the, the buffer zones would be um, changed based on that on the site mm -hmm. we can vote this contingent on receiving a revised plan indicating those changes um, and then again, I'll defer to Melissa and carry on the storm order <coughs> if you feel comfortable with the revised design on that and the other commission members as well. I think, yeah, definitely, I, think I, guess make, I guess one just brief comment on that on the drainage design. Um, yeah, I guess I would just point out that sometimes projects like this only come around every 30 or 40 years. So if there's an opportunity to make some improvements, you may not get another opportunity for a long time if the applicants willing um, this at, at a minimum I think having sort of a, a formal operations and maintenance plan that becomes part of the order and is recorded so at least the maintenance is sort of more, more memorialized than not I think it's certainly at a minimum a good step to have yeah I think that makes sense Melissa, what do you think? yeah that definitely makes sense the basins on the on on this side. You said it's a closed drainage system. Correct. Or do they have hoods and sumps and things? They like have that deep sumps, no hoods. Can hoods be added without a significant amount of extra work? Or um. I mean, through the chair, I just I feel like it's grandfather kind. You know, they're not doing, they're replacing everything in kind, essentially. So I wouldn't make them do too much additional, especially if the DPW hasn't had any issues. We're not seeing any issues in the wetland. Um, I agree with Melissa about, you know, it does look like the water overflows the catch basins and goes out there. But if they armor it correctly, it should. They're doing the maintenance annually. Yeah. And they have the formal operation and maintenance plan in place, I think. I, mean, I, I think you know my sense is I'm comfortable with that. I yeah, just want to make sure that about the res like changing the tension pond to resource areas. That's just personal. Yeah, yeah I mean, if you call it a resource area, then you're discharging exactly. directly into a resource area, and then it kind of makes you want to treat it, treat the water more before it's going into. It. But it's really not right, and then you wouldn't maintain it. You just let it grow wild, whereas we probably want them to maintain it to some yeah. extent. I don't think I want to change that. Okay. My opinion too. I wish people would just keep their, maintain their detention ponds until they want to grow all the other stuff. Well, it sounds like these folks are doing that, right? Yeah, they are maintaining what they they have. They they did get a directive from um, a previous iteration of this board to, um, in their terms, let it go wild. So right. get, I think. The thought process must have been as we get more wetlands on this earth and let that yeah. turn into it. So all they take down are the fallen limbs and the diseased trees that fall and die. I mean, that's why, the, yeah, after whatever it was, before 96, they kind of go out and get so old, but I just wish as new ones went in, people maintained them. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so that basic currently is probably 99% Phragmites, so it's acting as a wetland, but it's all invasive, so yeah. it's... Mm. Okay, so I think, um, you know, special conditions would include the O&M plan, um, and if the applicant would be so inclined to include some type of, you know, minor invasive species management, you know, maybe hand removing some of those on an annual basis as part of the O&M plan, that would be helpful. Um, we just need a revised plan submitted to the commission showing the updated wetland boundaries in the detention basin identified as a BBW. Mm -hmm. um, We're still waiting on a DEP file number. Still right. waiting on the DEP file number. And I thought there was one other special condition. I, Mr. Chairman? Yes, I sir. Have a question. Yep. How critical is the curbing to the function of the catch basin operation on the northerly side? That would be a question for the co chairs. That's correct. It's direct yeah. in the water there. Yeah, otherwise, it's otherwise just it would just sheath flowing off the side. So, so we, we, we currently have concrete curbing that's been there for. 84, so okay, 37 so, years. So, right. And it's going to be replaced with Cape Cod asphalt berm? Mm -hmm. Is that as durable? Should be, provided the plows stay that's, off it. That's, provided that's, that that's, <laughs> that's where I'm kind of going. The delivery truck goes. I mean, nothing is foolproof, right. but we that. You have to replace that if the damage is right? The curbing? Yeah, if the okay. plow damages it, they come back in the spring. Yeah. To me, that's an easier fix, more likely to be done. Um, call back the, the asphalt guys, replace the berm, than to reset the concrete. Okay. So they're more likely to be on that issue if we make it easier for them. Well, so the alternative would be a concrete curb than an asphalt. Curb. Yeah, or granite. Right. Granite's yeah. typically yeah, okay, used okay. in the areas that plows are going to push up against because the granite usually won't move. So have you considered that? Now that Ed's raised that question, have you considered other than do a bituminous curb? We thought the bituminous offered what we needed to control the stormwater. Get, allowed us to make updates if some portion got damaged, and quite frankly, 625 feet, it was a real cost oh, savings. Yeah. So, uh, so if it, ach it achieved the same purpose for a slightly better price, then. If there's damage in the sum in the winter from a plow, can it be, re I know, well, would it be replaced immediately or s soon after it's damaged or wait until spring, like wait typically spring. happens in the parking lot? But we're, out, so we're also not an intensive use. So we're 50 people in year one. Two lofty goal is 200 in year two. So the idea that we're using every inch in the foreseeable future. Yeah, no, I'm thinking of a breach in the curb. Now that Ed's raised it, a breach in the curb that, with the you know, off and on melts over the winter, becomes a problem with it. And I didn't look at the topography that closely, but. It's I mean, very, is very topography steep. is all flowing to the back. No, it's, it's very it's flowing to the well, topography. Well, the bituminous, yeah, bituminous plants aren't open in the winter time. I mean, no, no. Want, use so I think we would just want a condition. You put booms down. You can put it in the upper so it's a maintenance plan. Yeah, that's what I was going to suggest. Yeah, that's all I was saying. That's all I was suggesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the other special condition was just the annual report submitted to the commission for our record after the maintenance is done, mm -hmm. summarizing what the activities were that were conducted. Um, and then I think that's all I have. Any other concerns, questions from the commission? Nope. Questions or concerns from the audience? Okay, if I can get a motion to close and approve the notice of intent as discussed with the special condi condition specified in it's two weeks, enough time for the revised plan? Oh, absolutely. Okay. So moved. And a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, very good. Thank you. Good luck with the uh, startup. Thank you. Jeff, we're not going to meet for three weeks, so if we can do a Thank signature you. page. For, but well, we'd no. wait on DMP's phone
Okay, Mr. Petrozzi, 0 Leonard Street. This is a continuation of a notice of intent for the construction of a road for a subdivision. Uh, he's going to ask hey. you. Good evening, Thank Mr. Petrozzi. He's going to ask for continuations on what he just said. On the, on the lodge, yes. um, is this just an update? Yeah, well, um, we're going to deal with HC 39 first. Um, so, so are we so continuing or are you giving us an update? Uh, on, what, what's on this the HC 39, I'd like to proceed because that one didn't really request anything at the last, at the last time we met. Okay, so let's go with that one first. Yeah. You want to continue the other ones? Yeah, I'm, and I'm just going to give the board an update on okay. a couple of things. So at the last at the last meeting, we were talking about this. Uh, um, removing this culvert and doing some limited grading on uh, Leonard Street. Mm -hmm. The uh, commission asked for uh, uh, some additional reconnaissance re relative to this Box Mill Street. And um, as it turns out, there are there is an additional catch basin in this location here, which I brought photographs to show. But there's nothing else on the street. The commission was concerned that there might be some backup into the subdivision if we were to block this culvert off. So essentially, there's just this catch basin and that catch basin that drains across the street onto our property. But it essentially collects all the runoff from Box Mill Road. The, although there's a detention basin there, so is that it doesn't, it doesn't so really act. So it doesn't really do much. Which plan are you presenting? Do this I have is HC thirty nine. You have thirty nine. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So these are these are just some photographs that I took, just showing the proximity of the. And I brought the, uh, yeah, six copies. So, oops, sorry. Um, Thank you. Um, so, I've been there. That was really the only information that the commission asked for, just a little bit more um, verifiable information regarding these two catch basins here. But essentially the project has not changed or will not change. So um, uh, we're ready to close the hearing on this particular piece. Okay. Is this the, uh, is this the site plan? Got, uh, on the other side, yeah, move it up though. So what's the, can you just give us a little bit of um, update on what correspondence you've had with the DPW on uh, the removal of the pipe? We've been, uh, well, um, we haven't had any dialogue except that, you know, the matter is in litigation, so it's being handled through the uh, town's uh, legal counsel. Uh, we've uh, presented them with uh, some proposals relative to the more of a global type of uh, arrangement that will likely involve the other uh, notice of intents that we filed relative to the lot. So um, at this point, uh, we're not. We're so only so we're only talking dialogue. about re removing uh, or blocking the water flow from coming onto our property will not be uh, will not be uh, on any public property or anything like that to, to do the work that they've um, for the removal of the pipe right if it's approved okay right so Got we're, it. Uh, okay um, so through the chair just one yeah point. on the and the, in the uh, June meeting the, the Commission when you brought the the, the berm back you were yeah. gonna in the field locate so we can confirm that it was gonna yeah, be. Yeah, we, we've located the uh, the flags that are on here, and when we stake the erosion control, we'll be staking it. The oh, limits okay. of the limit of work will be staked in the field like any other project would be. Okay. So I wasn't sure of the timing. I thought. Yeah. I thought that well, that's the way. That's the way we would do it. I mean, like any other um, project. Okay. You'd locate, you, you, you stake out your limit of work and you, right. and you install your erosion control and before we start any work, it's inspected for its location, uh, the erosion control, and then we're 
we're free to right. proceed with the work. So. I just thought the, the commission was looking for, uh, in regards to the, the question of the Wetlands, Prote you know, Wetlands yeah. Protection Act, and just assurance that it would be outside. Yeah. Well, again, this, that's, a, I guess, a standard condition that would be in your order that... Well, the order wouldn't be under the Act. So. No, but I mean, in, under, even under your regulations, I mean, you'd ask us to do install the erosion control, stake it out, and have it inspected prior to commencing construction. Right, right. Yeah. So, I just so to be subject to inspection um, prior to doing work, if it's approved under the bylaw, so if Matt and Don go out there and look at it, and it's closer to the BVW yeah, um, than it's depicted on the plan, it'll have to be pulled back. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> I think. I'm oh, sorry. Can I ask one question? Yeah. I'm just I'm trying to remember. This, it's Box Mill Road. That's yeah. all private, right? Private it's, road? It's private right now. It's intended to be a public way at some point. It's still private. Right. Okay. Thanks. So I'm. Um, so is that a revised plan that you're submitting? No, I'm not. I'm not submitting this as a revised plan. This is a just a taped off. Because um, it was going to show like the catch basin over over here, wasn't it? Yeah, we're in the wrong. You're on the wrong. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's what we're showing here. I'll get. I'll, yeah, so you I'll, haven't given me electronics. I haven't given, that's what I'm asking. Right, no, I'm no, confused. No. I'll, I'll, my plan doesn't match with. Right, I'll get. Show. I'll get you a revised plan, but it's. it's so uh, you, so you've got hard copies for tonight. To no, I don't have any hard copies for tonight. Okay. Right. This is just uh, for presentation purposes. So it's approved. It'll be subject to re a revised plan being submitted to the commission. Right. To picking a location of the catch basins. Yep. And as it turns out, I don't know if you can see in the photographs that they uh, they, they put a berm around. Uh, see, there's a catch basin there that they yeah, that's one that's like that they yard. that they put a berm around. Who's they? The DPW? Nah, I don't know. This is this is what started the conversation. That's the original catch basin. So now they've. Um, Dewatering right. the lawn, not the street. No. So the uh, old, the old Edger Road used to do. Yeah. 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 So I guess they made it more of a um, yes. defined right of way for the berm. Okay, so I think that is a good starting point for my first uh, point that I want to make with this, which is we haven't really done. You know, I appreciate you going out there and doing the inspection for yourself and giving us your judgment on where you think the stormwater is going to go um, and that it's not going to impact the abutting properties. But I think you understand that this is an area where there's high groundwater and there's a lot of stormwater issues. So, and I, <coughs> you know, we discussed this initially. I think the extension of the road. Um, is fine. The curbing that's proposed is fine. The removal of the pipe, if that's approved by the DPW. Um, but my hesitation on this is that, and it goes to my point when we, this was first brought to us and we asked you about the engineering study and you declined to have a peer review. Um, from the commission, you know, take a look at the drainage features of the site. So that's my concern um, with this proposal. And I'll just, um, I'll open it up to the other commission members. I think some of the other folks didn't share the same concerns, but I'll let them uh, comment and then we can open it up to the audience, so. I would echo your concerns. Um, I do too. Um, I have a small question though. Um, I do live in the neighborhood. There is a catch basin up here. Again, it's not in the road. It's kind of in the grass. Where does that go? Is that tied into the system? Um, Did you guys I, not I, I see would, it? I would say, I, I haven't really looked into that, but I would say that it goes in the same spot. Yeah. yeah. Which is, 
But you, when you walked the property, you didn't see that one there. Well, it, well we he only asked me to look at what was in the roadway. So, well, but it's right next to the roadway. It's as yeah. far from the. It's it's less than me to use from the roadway. Yeah, there's um, um, there's a lot of things going on there with uh, drainage, as Chairman says. Uh, I'm willing to sit down with uh, maybe a select few members of the. Uh, Conservation Commission to come up with a solution if you're interested um, you know I can't you can't keep having these meetings and having me come here and you know no, I agree answer this but I bit. think the you know as I pointed out initially the peer review is something that we do on every subdivision development like I, this I, I it's an engineering I'm, review it's done for every single one of them so it's uncharacteristic not to do it um, and it, you know it's just uh, you know as I said because of the stormwater issues in this area and for the houses that you're proposing to develop here um, on this property I, I think it just needs to be vetted out by a professional engineer and not um, the developer yourself going out and looking at them and saying well you know these drain into this area I don't think it's going to be a problem and yet it just doesn't pass muster with me well um, we, we uh, not to interrupt but I mean we did substantially uh, pay a substantial amount of money for a peer review of this entire site both with the planning board and with the Conservation Commission so but they didn't look at drainage. Oh yeah, they did. They related did. to the catch basins. They, they looked at the whole drainage related to the entire site, which you're referring to. This, what we're proposing is going to actually help everybody else, not hurt them. Well, so it's that's, going to, that's your opinion, though. I haven't well, seen any kind of engineering conclusion that states that. That that's the point that I'm getting. Well, uh, we're gonna we're gonna have to disagree then because. Uh, I mean, Don, do you have the do you have the review by beta in the file or not in any this kind file. of engineering review? Not, not in this file. Okay. But in the in but the in the, the other file where they resolved pretty much every issue relative to the construction of Buckland. Um, but but that's Buckland, issues. not Leonard. But this water yeah. this water is going there. We're going to intercept this water and take it off of our property, which is going to improve everyone on the downside. Well, you're, you're removing a drainage pipe from your property. That's not there properly. It's, it's well, there that's in, that's irrelevant. There. It's, it's there now. Mm -hmm. You're going to remove it and block it. So the yeah. question is, when you block that pipe, where's the water going to go? The water's going to go off of our property. Onto the abutters' properties and down the street. And onto your property further down the street. And onto your property further down. I mean, that, that's the presumption, the but again, we don't have an engineering study. So, so if, we know, if we know where the water is going to go, what do we need to spend a thousand dollars on an engineer to tell us where it's going to go? Uh, I mean, that's we my do, money. We do need a peer review. Yes, yeah, well, and that's typically what we ask for. So yeah. I'm going to leave it at that. Okay. We can disagree on that point, but I think we have spent a lot of time on this. Yeah, I, I agree. It's, uh, okay. It's, all right. Uh, chair. Yes. I mean, my opinion, I don't like the design. I'll say that first of all. And I think it has, like you mentioned, potential to damage other property. But I don't think, you know, the public property ends. And I think my opinion is that, you know, our jurisdiction is protecting the resource area, which I, I think the resource area is going to act the same with this design. And then it becomes, you know, so I'm not saying that, like, I guess if we approved it, you know, there's potential that there be damage to other properties, but I don't think it's within our jurisdiction to have to to mitigate that, and that becomes a private private issue, and a private, you know, deep W issue, but um, this just this particular one I see as being permittable. But, I mean, again, I don't like the de design, but I don't think that it will neg significantly negatively impact the resource area just because the water's going to find a way to get there anyway. Mm -hmm. Well, it takes it from a point source, if you will, to sheet flow, sheet flow across the length of the what? I don't think it accomplishes what you think it's going to accomplish. Yeah, I don't either. I think it's just going to make it a bigger mess. But I, I think, think that the resource area too. is still going to be the resource area. It's still going to get, if you know, get Well, and this is all part of the issue is, is that we have to presuppose what's going to happen to the water. 
as opposed to an engineer looking at this and determining what will happen to it, right? So it's just, it's, it's an unknown. And Mr. Petros, I'm not trying to be difficult and throw up road blocks to your development here, but as I said, this is something that we typically require for every subdivision development. So there's no reason that we should, as a commission, say, well, you know, you don't have to do it here because it sets a dangerous precedent. So well, we're not proposing any development. We're proposing to remove water from our property that's being directed there. Well, this is part of a larger area. subdivision proposal. But for that, for that subdivision, we have had it reviewed. The drainage whole system has been reviewed by the by Bader under the jurisdiction but of it didn't, conservation. But the review didn't incorporate this portion oh, of yeah, the project. It, did. It, did. it incorporated the entire watershed. Uh, I think you really need to refer back to the report that Beta provided to the commission and to the uh, planning board to uh, feel comfortable that they have addressed all of those issues. If you want them to take another look at this particular thing under that um, scope of services, then you're we're welcome to do that because there's, I think there's plenty of money there. Um, but to say that it hasn't been reviewed is not would, would not be a correct statement. It's been reviewed. The whole watershed, where the water is going. Okay, so, so Mr. Chairman, chair. I'll just, just reiterate what I think. They didn't review think. this analog. They reviewed the other analog. That's correct. Right. They reviewed the work on the other side. Not this one. Yeah, we're, we're not going to argue about this, okay? We have the plan that's in place that Beta put together, okay? I don't think it covers the scope of what's being proposed here um, in terms of pulling the pipe out and just letting the water, blocking it and letting the water go wherever it wants to go. Um, so we'll leave it at that. We're going to disagree at that point. And then any other questions from the commission? In, We've been going back and forth on this for so, a number of meetings now, so. I don't know if this is worth pointing out or pointing, but if you were to make this change and enough time passed, I think it's very likely that those two now discrete resource areas are going to be connected. Maybe. As the water flows down the road and then down on the north side of the road, it's going to fill that in. Maybe. So now, depending on when you plan on coming back with your other, you may have to re-delineate uh, or delineate again those wetlands that are down there. Well, it's, it's because all we don't know again if the water is going in. I, I don't want to get into the whole semantics of this is the two isolated wetlands. Now, if it does connect it, it would be one isolated wetland. So it's not going to change the project that we've proposed on the other side, and. Quite frankly, I don't think it's going to change like overnight. Um, no. Second thing is that this is these wetlands are locked in for a three-year period from whenever the board renders its decision and appeals and whatever. It takes. Unless there's a significant change. No, it's not. No. Okay, let's move on. I think we've. We'll talk about this enough. so so um, with I, I'm, I'm ready to, I think we spent enough time on it it's a yeah. minimal um, it's a minimal amount of work that we're proposing to do it's a private way okay we got it so. um, let me just open up to questions or comments from the audience okay um, so would you like to commission the vote uh, no. I'd like to close the hearing yeah okay so if I can get a motion to close the hearing I'll make the motion. And a second. Second. And this is under the bylaw, not the Wetlands Protection Act. So if I can get a motion to approve the development under the bylaw. Approve this work. This work. I'll make the motion. Second. Yeah, I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. No. Right. Opposed. Okay. I'm sorry, so that was two. Kerry and Jim approved. Okay. You're in favor and for remaining or against. Okay. Okay. So how do you want to handle your uh, under your bylaw the uh, the uh, what is it the reconsideration process? You want to have another hearing? 
Um, we can. So that I think it's 10 day, days. After right? we after we issue the yeah. the decision, yeah. Yeah. then then you'd have yes, 10 you can business days to submit to a, request a request for reconsideration. Well, there'll, there'll there'll be a couple of things that'll be going on. I mean, obviously we'll file in court for a restraining order and an injunction against the town. So yeah. Um, so it will go. So as far as. Uh, um, as far as the other uh, hearings, uh, we'll continue those until you're. Yeah, if you could sign yeah. sign that, I'll. Um, Pen. Yep. You want to continue those out to? Well, what date? Interesting. Uh, the planning board did not take it up for discussion at its last uh, meeting, and then it's rescheduled for September 23rd. So, um, so we have September 24th and October 8th. Well, let's do the 24th. I love coming to Hopkinson. <laughs> okay. And um, I really think <coughs> the commission should review the drainage re um, pair review that was done by Beta because I really don't think your um, decision was based on. Um, they did study the entire watershed, so. Okay. You may want to take that into consideration, take the consideration when you uh, review the rest of it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, so I take it the commission's not interested in having like a select uh, few members discuss uh, settlement or any kind of uh, mitigation here, like outside of the hearing process. That could be taken up if you file a. Uh, request for reconsideration. Well, no, this has to do with the other uh, notice of intents relative to the oh, development of the entire property, which, as Chairman has indicated, there are issues that have potential uh, that could be resolved. Um, but I think it probably makes sense to wait until the planning board um, closes their hearing and we get an indication from the DPW on what they're going to do with with the removal of the pipe. Well, no, this is uh, this is uh, isolated from the pipe. I mean, if if the plan the planning board is considering simply the construction of Buckland Street, nothing to do with this side of the property. But I think uh, the bigger issue is the water coming onto the property and and going onto other people's property that. That needs to be dealt with either through um, informal discussions or through the litigation that's ongoing. So uh, we've been encouraged to bring to this, the reason I'm bringing it up is that we've been encouraged to uh, s discuss proposed alternatives to uh, mitigation. Yeah. So I think the so probably the avenue to do that would be to re make that request to the principal planner okay and then they can coordinate with the various boards you know okay. and if they do that I will certainly be one of the um, uh, volunteers from the Commission that will participate okay. we just can't have a quorum so maybe yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. that's what I just said it's a little yeah. select few members yep. that at least we can discuss in an open way. But I think to make the conversation valuable, it would have to include the DPW, the oh, member sure. of the planning board. Oh, absolutely. Um, okay. Absolutely. So yeah, I'd be happy to do okay. that. Okay. Great. Thank, thanks very okay. much. Yep. I'll see you at the 23rd. Oh, maybe I'll see you before then. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Patrol. Right. See you later. Okay. Lake Maspinock Weed Management and Control I, uh, Advisory Group. This is an informal discussion. Good evening. Good thanks. So, as you may know, can you get your names for the record? Oh yes, Hoppin yeah. Page, seventy-four Pine Island Road. Um, Rick Marino, ninety-seven Crockett Road. As you might know, Lake Maspinock has had a weed problem ongoing for many, many years. And a number of years back, we went through the Conservation Commission and we had approved 
a extended drawdown, which would bring the lake down about eight feet lower mm -hmm. than normal. That was an effort to, it, this would be during the winter months, and that basically would expose the lake bottom and the shallow areas where they had the, the weed problem would be exposed to freezing and thawing, and that would kill the roots and improve the situation. And we had several fairly successful drawdowns. Clause 54 of the order of conditions indicates that we have to have a plan in place if someone loses their water. And there is one home on the lake, which we have not verified, but through their word of mouth has indicated that they lose water when the lake is drawn down probably below five feet or so. Mm -hmm. We don't know exactly where that, that occurs. If it does, we have not verified it. However, in order to alleviate that concern, the LMPA would essentially pay them a fee to move off during the period of mo the most drastic drawdown so that they would not have to occupy the premises in case they did lose water. And that it was done for, I think, three times. Last year, the uh, drawdown was supposed to take place, more extended drawdown, and the people on the island were not amenable to the prior arrangements, mm -hmm. so the drawdown did not take place. Mm -hmm. And we knew that the lake or the weed problem was going to be worse. It had, over the years, you have to draw down. The next year, it's great. The following year, it's a little worse. The third year, you know you're going to have to do something. And the fourth year, which was last year, we should have done something. And this year, basically, parts of the lake, you cannot take a boat up there. Um, the weeds have never been as bad as they, they've been. And if we don't do something soon, we're going to lose the upper basin. And the lake management committee that's sponsored by the town has done a lot of studies over the years, over a couple <coughs> of years, and identified a couple of feasible ways to control the, the weeds. The most accepted and, and least expensive is a drawdown. The other would be mechanical harvesting, and there's lots of issues concerning that. When you do that, you're fragmented. You have to find a place to dispose of it, and there's lots of different issues. And the last is herbicides, which anybody who was around town several years back, when it, when it went in front of the um, town meeting, there was opposition to it, and that's something that we kind of expected, but that is really the three that have been identified. Other methods do exist, but they are so expensive that it's not feasible. So in an effort to satisfy Clause 54, which indicates that we have to come up with a plan to re replace water for anybody who loses water, um, we've come up with a plan. And we'd like to describe that to you tonight and basically expose you to it so you can discuss it. And <coughs> Rick Marino will present it for you. I'm not sure if you, you, you have handouts, is that correct? Yeah, so if I can just, before you get into describing the, um, what the plan is, um, Don, do you have the order of conditions? Yep. If you could just bring that up, because there was two conditions that were relevant to this. And you, well, they're all relevant, but two that 25, were specific to, yeah, so yes. And we do know the order is expired, so it's no longer a valid document. The, the, the document of record now is the operation and maintenance plan, which has a copy of the order as a reference document. Right, so. so. And those are the two that really we have to kind of fall back on as a commission because the O&M plan was predicated on the order of conditions that were originally issued. So there's the one that the residents with any shallow well, I know that Spindle Island is the one resident who was opposed to the extended drawdown, but it applied to anyone who had a shallow well in the vicinity of the lake that would be affected by the drawdown. Um, and, and that there would be a plan in place to provide them with water well, prior to the first drawdown. Prior to the first drawdown. And the commission received that. This was the plan that was submitted prior to the first drawdown. So that that's a condition has been fulfilled. So then moving forward, it was if any moving forward, the, the future ones, it was just if if um, if there were any wells that were that were deemed impacted, 
then an arrangement would be made to address <coughs> that situation. Right. So they don't need a, an, another plan isn't required under the order. No, no, no. I know that. So what I'm saying is, under the order of conditions, so there was 24. Condition 25? Right, 25, yep. So, so that's the order does not authorize any injury to private property or the invasion of private property rights. Right. And then the other one was 54, I believe, right? So 54, prior to the conduct of the first extended drawdown, the DPW submitted a plan for providing alternative water supplies to homes with shallow wells that are likely to be impacted. Because the NOI pointed that out. All right. So just to clarify, that happened. Also, right. Right. no other home has expressed any issue mm. with the prior drawdowns. Um, many of them either drilled deeper wells where they were planning to do it, some hooked up to town water, and the only issue that we've ever had, again, not verified, is with the island. Okay. All right. So, um, go ahead. You can s okay. summarize the plan. All right. Thank you. Sure. So I have eight eight copies. So, um, and we don't have a formal site plan, but I did draw like a um, on the the last page is a uh, hand drawn site plan. Okay. Just for as reference. Uh, okay. Who? Wants to sure. Sorry. <laughs> so if you can kind of maybe turn that way a little bit so the audience can hear you as well. This way? Yeah, because I think they're having difficulty yeah, hearing okay. what you're saying. Yeah. So um, hearing, hearing that comment about the first plan being already done, we would prefer not to have to be forced to, you know, offer this plan but we obviously want to really do this so if we're if we have to we will do this and, and basically the plan is okay they run out of water and we need to supply them with water um, they the location of the property they're on an island which is about hundred and twenty feet from the the mainland here mm -hmm. So um, really the only two ways that we can see to get them uh, water is either an artesian well, which we would have to get, which would be really expensive, and we'd have to get an artesian well driller out on their property on the island. And, and then it would be very complicated because we'd have to have a lot of engineering, um, you know, civil engineering, board of health. There's a lot of liabilities that would take place. Mm -hmm. Second plan would be to uh, get them like an external rain harvest tank that holds 3,000 gallons of water. And we would then essentially, when they lost their water, they would be on this, this water reserve tank and it would have <clears throat> a pump and, and uh, an ozone uh, machine that would actually uh, introduce ozone into the tank to take care of any microorganisms and, and things like that. And basically we would, uh, we would fill this tank monthly and provide them, they, we would provide them with the funds to uh, fill this tank from an external tanker on Crockett Road. Um, they would have a 200 foot plus hose and for $425 uh, per drop of 3,000 gallons, they would get their water s source. Um, and it would be non-potable water. So it's, it's the difference between non-potable water and uh, clean supplied water. The, the difference is the tank that it's delivered on, the truck tank. Um, but the water is clean, and it would be as clean as the well water that they have. As a second, um, mo uh, offer we would also provide them with 60 gallons of drinking water per month. <clears throat> There's two people that live there. The average person should drink a gallon of water a day. So 30 days on average, 60 gallons. We would 
provide that for them. So we would handle their drinking water supplies and their water for their uh, bathing, showers, and a hot water heater that they have. So that's really the best solution that we can come up with. <coughs> um, can you comment on the uh, drawdown at the, at the deepest level. It's supposed to be maintained at that level about two weeks or so, two to three weeks, depending on, on the weather, and then we start bringing the lake level back up. Mm -hmm. So we're not talking about six months at a time, maybe two months, you know, from okay. six feet, and then when it gets back down to six feet or five and a half feet, somewhere in that range. But we would have to have some flexibility based on the weather. If mm -hmm. it snows and we get a cover of snow and that prevents some frost, we would certainly want to, all of a sudden, the next week we could have a sunny day, melt all the snow, then it could get really cold, freeze that ground, take care of all the weeds. That's what you're talking about, for the weeds. Exactly. So we have a few different scenarios, but bottom line is, is we want to be able to give them a plan that they could have water supply and not have to move out of their property for even if it was, you know, you know, 70 days, six, 90 days, you know, 60 right. days. Um, so we will also, <clears throat> if they were amenable, offer them the plan that we had in place before. I mean, that would be the easiest solution, but this is a solution, as, as Rick said, that they would not have to move out of their property. Right, okay. So um, just knowing what questions you may ask is, okay, well, how do we get there? What's the conservation impact? Um, we have to be able to get a, um, there's two options that we're thinking of, and it kind of depends on what these people say. To, we would need to dig a utility trench from this water tank so that we can get the electrical conduit and the water four feet in the ground so it won't freeze on them and bring it into their house. Um, that's one option. Um, in that case, we have to bring a mini excavator across this 120-foot uh, path here. Um, I drew a cross-section, and at the deepest point in the middle, it's seven feet currently, So, but it pitches up. But there would be a section of this that we would probably have to put some sort of mud pads or some sort of, uh, you know, conservation-approved uh, bridging to get the machine across. Um, this is a mini excavator, so it's not a large machine, uh, but certainly we would need to do that. We would need to get a, another small, um, like a skid steer, track skid steer, to bring in material to for the trench. Uh, option, the other option that we were thinking is, is to do more of a temporary water line and electrical line so we wouldn't have to trench and, and you know, make it a, a larger project than we want. If we could l have a water supply line that had a heating cable on it, along with a, a temporary electrical line to this pump system, it would save a lot of work and it would be, you know, we'd, we'd do less excavating and it, it'd be a lot easier. The other thing, they have a causeway <coughs> in the winter. They're allowed to put a causeway between the mainland and the island, which they use to walk across. So. If we had to bring a hose, it could be run across that. Right. Uh, and they had to. Re they think they put that in November, and they had to have it removed by mid mid May every year. So the, the causeway stays in there for the winter time, so they can walk. It's a series of docks that they couple together and walk across. Um, so would it be feasible to lay the water line and the electrical line on the causeway? Yeah. Um, Rather if, than excavating as a temporary solution? Well, the water tank would be located on their island. Right. They don't own the property across the way. So if we were to do that, the, the plan would change and they'd have to have permission for the water tank to go on their, their in-law's property. And then, they would, then you'd have to run the water line and the electrical line the 120 feet plus an extra 100 some odd feet to their house. It, um, yes, it, anything is doable, but uh, I, it seemed li unlikely that that might be the best solution. I we are we're basically trying to float this out to you to get some comments. Um, we have not approached them on, on the plan as of yet. Yep. Uh, okay. Mr. Chairman, so 
So can I just make a couple of points before I, you know, I'll open up to the, the commission? So um, the O&M plan now is the applicant responsible party for implementing that as a DPW. That's correct. Um, just so this history, four, the LMPA was a co-applicant. Right, and we undertook that on our yeah, end to right. make arrangements and to pay the funds to them. Right, right. I understand. But any kind of proposal related to Spindle Island has to come through the DPW, Correct. not the LMPA. Correct. So that's the first point. Um, I think any of these options could be, um, you know, something that could be approved by the commission. But ultimately, the Spindle Island folks have to agree to it, mm -hmm. right? And I don't foresee that happening before. Um, what's the time frame to get right the now. request in for the extended drawdown? Well, oh, that's it, already in. They've requested that, well, the request is in, but right, and then the timing is right here. So it commences in mid September, mid -September. and then reaching full drawdown by mid December, and then when they do the eight foot. It would be for one to two weeks. Right. So we will get that filling the light probably sometime. I'm going to say mid to late November. Right. I mean, so it, it may be possible. I don't know. It all depends on how the conversations go between LMPA and Spindle Island. So once that gets resolved, and then they agree to a solution, whether it's the excavation, which would have to be a notice of intent filing. Um, if you're going to excavate on the lake bed, um, if it's a temporary solution, you're just bringing it across the waterway and there's no type of excavation. Um, Correct. Correct. You know, that could be approved probably more expeditiously. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, but the key is, is that um, it has to be agreed to with the folks at Spindle Island. Mm -hmm. And the position that the town is taking uh, because one of the requests that came through the Conservation Commission by the Lake Management um, Weed Committee was, can we just change the order of conditions so we can, um, you know, avoid this whole issue? And the position that the town's taking was condition number 24 that they're not willing to impose on someone's, you know, personal property rights. They just, you know, the town manager doesn't want to do that. The assistant town manager, the DPW. So we're kind of hamstrung from that point of view, and our purpose know, tonight was basically to introduce, give the us plan. an update. Yeah, if yep. it was something that you said this is absolutely ridiculous, we wouldn't even consider it, then there's no reason to go to the island and talk to them. Right, from right. a conservation point, mm -hmm. right? We wanted to make sure that you yes. didn't have a, uh, uh, there was uh, issues with conservation yeah. aspect of this project yeah. that you really you couldn't have, overcome or yeah, you couldn't meet. Yeah, no, I think, I think you know, what's proposed here is something that could be permitted. Um, you know, obviously we would have to have a filing in front of us and the details in order to evaluate it, but it's not something outside of the realm of possibility. You know, as I said, if we're going to excavate in the lake bed, that would be a higher standard that we would have to look at, you know, through the notice of intent. It's a crossing, yes. not an excavation. Right. right, yeah. So I'll leave it at that and then open it up to the other commission members for their input. So I was just going to say that if you do the temporary solution, you're going to be doing a temporary solution every year going forward. Every, every three years. Every year that there's a drought. Right? Yes. So maybe a permanent solution is... I mean, we prefer that, then we're not here... Do it and do a cost-benefit analysis. That's what I'm Well, the intent is to, do the extent, is to do the drawdown every year. Yeah, we have permission to go four to five feet right. every year. Yeah. And that doesn't cause problems for anybody. And that protects the walls, it protects the docks, and it does, in the shallowest areas, affect the weeds. But we need to do that every three years in order to really, really yeah. do it. Yeah. So yeah. this yeah. system, though, is going to be donated to them. They're going to keep this system so that they can use it every three years when we do the drawdown. So the LMPA will... We're going to take up a collection um, of, of residents to fund the, the project. Okay. And then it's going to be given to them. And then in future drawdowns, LMPA will still take up collections to supply them with the water. To run that. 
So it'll be a, line. Yeah. Well, no. The this unit will all be installed in, on their property, but given be, to them, donated the, to them. The, uh, water the water delivery. The water delivery, yes, would be delivered to them every third year for you know a two two month say two month period process. Yeah. So that that's the that was what we came up with. It's, it's not much else we can do. Thanks. I would look to the town to either bear all the costs of it or at least some of it. So, you know, <laughs> we would like that, but I think it's the a entire of town public benefits funds. from the <laughs> right. Sandy Beach area, right, and bringing their canoes and boats down there. At it's this point, hard. we'd be lucky if they'll allow us to do this drawdown and not, you know, you know, we 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 want them on our side, not making us have to really fight and push hard all different ways that we can come up with, you know? Right. Because the alternative methods are basically much more expensive. We're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars in order to, to uh, mechanically harvest or use herbicides. Right. Uh, and that it would cost the town in the long run a lot more money. It's just a matter of whether public funds can be used to buy something on private property. I don't know what the, the actual rules are. The chair. Yes, so two, just two cents. If you go for the permanent with the trenching, you might want to check with. Uh, okay. Sorry. Yep. Um, through the chair. Um, chapter um, the Lake Massanoc is a is a great pond, and there's DPS jurisdiction under Chapter 91. I just don't know if the trenching activities, you know, would be allowed. Well, it, it might come under that jurisdiction or not. They might want to look at. It. Because I know it's for docks and, and retaining walls. I'm just not sure yeah, so if, we were, if trenching would come under right. the purview. I think the trenching would only be on their property, though. Like we wouldn't be trenching in the water. Because right. this whole unit is all on their property. You know what I mean? With that 120-foot span. That's just to that get the equipment the across. Right. Oh, the flexible hose. Would that be trenched the on water. the ground or no. just laying on the no on the causeways? Uh, that's not yeah, that that oh, comes from a big tanker truck. They pull up, and then they have oh, okay. this coiled up hose. Yeah. Pump it in. Well, I was the trenching aspect. Yeah. Yeah, I was under the, the, the impression that, that you trench put a across. Hose. Yeah, right. no, no trenching would take place on their property from right. the tank no, no, into their home. Right. If we have if we go that route, oh. so it's nothing okay. is on. Right. Their own so way. then it wouldn't have to go okay, through the uh, chapter 91. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it wouldn't have to go through the DEP. That's correct. Um, if we did it that way. Yeah, to keep it on the private property. Yeah. yeah. Just through That's the commission. True. So I, I think it's something that could be permitted yeah. through okay. the commission. Okay. Yep. I mean, I agree that you're going to need, we're going to need something, the town should have something from that property owner, because even this is property owner Milford, that like, that ident indemnifies the town. Cause like, I'm looking at this, and it seems like a viable solution, but if it only gets run every three years, every three years you're going to have to fix it. Like, And I don't know, you yeah, know, as soon as I saw, like, the, the, the pumps and the ozone system, I'm like, if that's not run continuously, it's, if you only set it up every three years, it's not going to work every three years. Right. You're going to flip the switch. So it's not going to work. Yeah, yeah. and I don't know if these people understand, like, what they're getting. And this is a complicated yeah. system. Yeah, but we would... Yes, I understand that, but we're giving them a complete system for their house. It, it, and, and um, you know, there comes a time where they have to, you know, take care of their own selves. And, you know, we, I, it's not like we'd have to get something from them because this is a significant maintenance. You know, most right. people think but to buy a, you know, some pump and they don't realize it's in the backyard and that until it fails. Right. And they're like, why isn't the town helping? You so know? we would word well, it legally that we're going to give them this equipment and this is how it's going to be in their, it's their property, their own, their equipment. If in three years, when we do a drawdown, one of these components craps out, they, they shouldn't be able to come after us and say, hey, you know, we need a new blah, blah, blah. I and think that goes we, we, back to that, though, like, you know, the private property, like, if it craps out and they still have no water because we're doing the drawdown, we're back in the same place. So I think you have to have something from them, like an agreement yeah. that's very clear right. who's responsible for what, at right. what point, um, mm -hmm. and funding, and, and they probably should have, yeah, if they're smart enough, they'll ask for, like, what they own and costs are going to yeah. be on their part, but I think we should have that on record 
Um, yeah, that's a good point. With yeah. an O and M plan, so that if they sell the house, it's on. It's with the the filing, so that the next person can't say, "I didn't know how to." Understand? Make it. Yep. Yeah. No, that's and a if, good point. If you guys do draft a some type of contract or agreement like that, I think we would want town council to look at it. Sure. Because the other issue is if they got sick from the water, yeah, because they weren't maintaining yeah. it. We don't want them coming back and suing the town. Right. Right. That's so why we would want to have them give them an allowance so that they can take care of their own business. Yeah. And then we're not saying, oh, we, you know. We're going to maintain We don't want to have that, that right. link to them. The, the one thing that I, I just wanted to ask, I'm sorry, really quick, is, is that we want to assume that they're going to say no. Right? They're going to say, no, we don't want this system. And we want to look at that and make that assumption. They're going to say no. And what are we? What can we do next? You know what? You know it can't just be a okay. We, it can't be done. We have to. We have to get this done. So I mean, basically, there's one homeowner holding mm -hmm. the whole town hostage. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're making the effort to try to satisfy them. But there's only so much that we can do, given the wetlands, Oops. given their small parcel given the challenge of them not being directly connected to the land I mean there are a lot of things obviously going on great yeah well I would say you know bring this proposal to them we'll see what they say if they decline it then we have to come then up we'll with go from there you know, an option two All right. okay. um, and the town may need to get involved in that so okay right. okay thank you you're thank welcome you. Mr. Chairman there's I think Yep. Okay, yeah, questions from the audience? If I can just get your name and address, ma'am. The Jill Strickler page, 74 Pine Island Road. I think there had been some discussion, I don't know if it would come under your jurisdiction, but if we were to start a extended drawdown, if they refused and we started an extended drawdown and then they said that they lost water, that they would have to prove, like let someone on the island to see that they really did and we could stop the drawdown. I don't know if that's something that would be amenable under those Never Since been they've verified. never proven that they yeah. have lost water and the whole septic and well is questionable, but it's stayed within the family, so. Yeah. Um, we could stop because it. it's private property, I think you're limited to. But if they're. I mean, we can't do the extended drawdown without getting their, you know, the town buying into it, you know, first. Um, and then getting their. Uh, agreement that you know they were going to allow us to do it as well. So I think if they say no, we don't want to do the extended drawdown because our well is going to go dry. I think the town is going to revert back to the condition, you know, 54 and say there's a potential liability for the town. I mean, I'm just guessing, I don't know, but I think the town manager and the assistant town manager had pretty strong opinions about this, Don. Am I correct, Mr. Chairman? Could you post? Uh, <clears throat> item 54 on the screen again, please. In the water. Somebody read that. Oh, it, it, it was 24, I'm sorry. 25. 25. 25. Well, the, the one I was looking for was 54, <coughs> the second one that you posted. 54? Yeah. 54. It's 25. It's really right. Well, there, there was 25. a word in 54 that caught my attention. The word likely. Uh, homes with shallow wells that are likely to be impacted. Um, yeah. And as we know of, there's only one. My name is Mark Campbell, 20 Downey Street. Uh, there was there's only one home, this home that the gentleman are talking about. Mm -hmm. and no, there were more. You know, this is there any these were the likely ones based yeah. evidence of you know these these wells drying out? Have we? seen any documentation or anything that proves that these wells dry out? I don't think the commission has received that. Huh? that would I could I comment a little bit on that. We identified 10 properties that had a possibility because of the system, the water system that they had. However, only one turned out to be an ongoing issue. Mm -hmm. And as evidenced by multiple drawdowns, nobody has expressed any issue other than the island. And as I said earlier, some had connected to public water, some had drilled their own wells, and it's the no other longer, nine were no longer no one ten issue. anymore. It's right. the one. Yeah. Okay, yes, sir. Sweeney 193 West Main Street. Wow. I believe in the condition it says that we have to come up with a plan. It doesn't say that it has to be accepted by them. Uh, we've come up with a 
come up with a plan. It may need to be tweaked on certain aspects of things just in front of you now. But it doesn't say anything that they have to accept or not. Is that correct? It's the DPW's directed. They're the responsible body. They're the ones who deal with the. Yeah, again, I think that would have to be something that the town um, council would have to look at. I mean, it's an interpretation of the wording of the conditions. I would agree with you. You have to come up with a plan. The word likely um, and the condition, you know, these are all things that are different angles that could potentially be used to just go ahead and do the extended drawdown without, you know, the resident's permission. But again, this potential liability for the town and the DPW and the town manager have to be comfortable with that. Um, what do you see as a liability? Well, if the impingement on their property rights, if their well runs out of water and they can't use their property. Yes, sir. Jim Stubel, 68 Fire Island Road. So it, to me, it comes down to governance. You know, we have a great lake, we have a great basin, we have a valued resource, and we know that this is a proper way to maintain that resource left unattended to, the resource will go away. So how is this single act of a person who claims to have these issues going to impact the ability for us to maintain this resource? And how long do we go along with this until it becomes an issue where we can't recover from? Mm -hmm. So it's, to me, it's a governance issue. And at what point will we all just say, well, we just forget the lake from now on? It's got so many weeds we can't even use it because one person doesn't want to give up the right. So uh, I don't know how to answer that question, Mr. Chairman, but I think that's something that I'd like to hear some feedback on as, as to how to make that governance uh, call because certainly one person out of 15,000 shouldn't affect the way this resource is managed. No, I, I agree. Um, some other questions? Yep, yeah, ma'am, did you have a question? exhaustively on solutions and committees and meetings and we're getting stonewalled in every direction in the meantime you know I, we this lake is being starved with weeds with snails with it, it's really out of control and we're, we're keep going from commission to commission that's telling us it's going to go to another commission and we're really looking for guidance on solving this problem that we're working really hard to solve and it, the, the community it is really asking for the town to help us solve mm -hmm. this problem. Yeah I understand and there's a few different committees that have responsibility for it. This is our third point. Yeah I'm on two of them so I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and uh, Mr. Chairman I'm just if, if you see the pattern that we're just going hopping Yeah, yeah. No, I, um, I guess, you know, what I can offer to do is um, go back to the DPW and the town and, you know, raise some of these points that you've made about the governance, you know, the wording of the order. We can take a closer look at the O&M plan, um, maybe get town council to take a look at it and hopefully, you know, get some resolution from the town because you know the commission can say yes let's go ahead and do this but then if the dpw doesn't agree with it and the town manager doesn't agree with it because of potential liability issues then we're just back to square one again right so is there a way that we can get these parties together to come up with a more or a less viable plan or sure. Can I just say something? So, and whether it's relevant to, to our, to what we do or not, I would agree that, that they should be made to 
give an offer of proof that they're running out of water, that the drawdown is affecting them. Otherwise, they're are holding everybody else hostage. Mm -hmm. um, so it would seem that DPW has that authority. They're, they're, they're asking, uh, <laughs> they're asking, um, you know, DPW has responsibility. And um, so if that's the result of the drawdown, then it seems to me that they would have to prove that they're being affected by it. And I think DPW's got the authority to ask for that information. Or well, the Board of Health. Board, Board, of, Health. Board of Health, I'm sorry. That's right. the Board of Health in Milford. Uh, no, it's no, that's Hopkins. Right? Hopkins right? Yeah. It is. Yeah, it, it is in Hopkins. Yeah. That's why we're here. But yeah, but the Board of Health does have jurisdiction so, over drinking water. That's sad. I don't know how to answer sewer. the question of what can we all do to get this going. Yeah, a few more, and then we got to move on because yeah. we got to be out of here by ten. So, yeah. oh, sorry, uh, yeah, ma'am. Um, I guess my biggest question is if we, the conservation commission, if something doesn't get done, isn't the issue of the North Asian going to fall under the conservation commission hands? Because it's going to die. And isn't that under the purview to protect? Well, it'll eutrophy. It's not going to die, well, which is, it's, you know, the recreational aspect of the lake the, is diminished. We, we, um, when we did the weed management before, we had to sit by the weed harvesting and throw the little frogs back and make sure the fish got back in. If it dries up, if it gets overgrown, they're all going to die anyway. They're dying. They're dying they're now. Yeah. It's Isn't that con comes? issue to deal with or help us deal with? Well, that's why you're all here. <laughs> so, well, I mean, but we're not getting it dealt with, is what well, I guess I'm trying to say. The commission just gives permissions for whoever presents the It's a the challenging, plan. yeah, so I, I understand the frustration, you know, because there are multiple boards involved in this, because we have one resident who's holding it up, um, you know, it's it's a challenge. I understand that. So the, the only commitment I can make is that I'll reach out to the DPW, the town manager, That's all and um, yeah. you know, see if we can formulate some type of strategy to get this resolved. Other than you know, some of the other actions that we're already implementing with the lake management, you know, committee and that type of thing. But um, you know, that's that's <coughs> I think what all I can offer you tonight. Um, and then when I get feedback, I can, you know, uh, present it to the different committees and, um, you know, hopefully we'll make some headway. Okay. Thank you. Yep. A couple Chair, more. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, sir. So these property owners have really shown total disregard for the town. Yep. I, we get that. They have not paid their taxes. We get it. There have been multiple tax takings on this property. It's gone into foreclosure. Uh, why doesn't the town just complete Process. We're the Conservation <laughs> Commission. You have to talk to the town about that. So, but that's maybe, we, you know, I understand your point, sir. So let's, if we, it's not our jurisdiction, number one. So I understand there's a lot of venting that's going on, but, you know, we only have jurisdiction to approve. If someone wants to come in and provide some type of solution, you know, we can work there. As I said. And, and I just committed to you that I will talk to the DPW and I'll talk to the town and try to get a strategy formulated to get some headway on this. Something like this. Yeah. Right. Is, you need to prove I, that there's a problem. Well, we understand there's a problem. I think that's clear to no, everyone. No, no. <laughs> they need to prove there's a problem. That they are All right. Sorry, I misunderstood you. Yeah. But anyways, okay, a couple more. Yes, ma'am. So that, that was actually done. The Board of Health did go out there and collect samples around the island. Okay. And the E. coli levels came back um, at basically trace levels, and they were lower than what was detected at Sandy Beach. I think uh, we have a person in the audience that is a volunteer for the Board of Health that can... Yeah, that is true. We did. Yeah. We went out. I believe it's a little more chair of the Board of Health. But uh, I also, the 
is the cesspool and septic issue is an issue of because it's a first generation transfer of property between um, a parent and a <coughs> child, it doesn't trigger Title V. But that transfer was the 1962 transfer. Well, then there was another one in 2013. There are other issues around that that are so outside the purview of CONCOM, I think. Yeah. Well, the fact that the chair has agreed to go to DPW in the town is probably... Um, sure. Yeah. I wasn't but aware because the meeting was true. Everything's yeah. happening so quickly. I tried to keep up, and I haven't been able to, but... But, but the testing was done to answer your question, and there were trace levels that were detected, so... Yeah. So my point, though, that I yeah. wanted to make, too, okay. is in terms of coming up with pointers to give to the town manager um, at DPW is that like the long-term effects on the lake are gonna, we could argue about this for another year or two. And by the time we come to a solution, we're gonna be back to square one where we were with those three other options. And from a political perspective, for the town manager and anyone involved in politics in the town, they're gonna have a hell of a town meeting to deal with, with people, again, all the issues of the herbicide or the dredging or all this. So politically speaking, if they're like nervous to take on liability, I would say, you know, weigh your options. What's a bigger liability? Potential issue with this one person or a, a really angry group of people from the league and other people in the town coming again right. to haunt them. Uh, understood. Un unfortunately, with town politics, things don't move as quickly as we'd like them to. So. But, you know, again, I'll talk to him and see what I can do. So, okay. yes, sir. Yep. Hi, Dave Gibbs from Crockett Road. And first of all, I'd like to thank the positive comments that were made tonight. One of the things we're looking for tonight is to have increase your awareness of the problem. I have a suggestion. I would suggest, and I don't know about open meeting law, but I'm sure you can answer that, Jeff, is I'd suggest that LMPA President Drew Logan, Cynthia S. Tyler, who is the chair of Lead study committee. I recommend that Rick Marino, who made the presentation this evening, meet with Norman Kamalo and um, John Westerling. You know, I think it would be helpful for Norman Kamalo to hear this alternative plan and better educate himself that there is a plan out there to help these people. So I think to me, problem right now is between Jeff, John Westerling and Norman Kamalo and, and knowing Norman fairly well and I've dealt with Don and Norman in the past with lake issues. He's a fine man. I think that might be helpful to move this off. And if Norman feels with the support of selectmen that we're not held hostage any longer by these people, we can do an extended drawdown because we're going to have a plan for them. If they don't like it, that's life. No, that's a good suggestion. I'll, I'll uh, add that to... Just a small group and see if we can move Norman. Yep. And I would ask Don to be a part of that also. So, you, know, you, you know the history, Don, as well as I do. Yeah, I mean, he's my boss if he wants me to attend. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more and then we've got to move on. Yes, sir. Okay, appreciate everyone's comments. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Okay. Moving along. Um, so, Colte Farms. Jeff, you want to pass it before it gets lost? Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. We should have looked up. You can see. You can see my taxes were up and down. Stay with the day that I won. Type in Hopkinton Patriot Properties Don. Um, so pull day Don, that's yeah. not up. Uh, that doesn't um, expire soon, right? They have a little bit of time. Because uh, I reached out to the homeowner and he hasn't received the check from them yet. So I was wondering if we could just table that to the next meeting. 
Hold two seconds. I'm going to need to use spreadsheets. We've had some of that discussion before. As long as they get their request in, it's not like their permit. Right. It's going to expire and right. they start over. Right. Right, so exactly. Yeah. Melissa, when did you say you were taking over as chair? <laughs> Not anytime soon. When my kids are in high school, maybe. <laughs> oh, look, that's good. Right there. <laughs> nice job, Jeff. I know. Or Carrie. How can you know, man? You're Hers so are good. Hers are in high school first. <laughs> <laughs> you have to you rather on camera. Keep things moving. This is all part of transparency. Hide as much stuff as you can. Um, uh, so this is how to get this on the website. I think they had time. So, uh, talk to the people. Talk to Sounds like they've been run off the shotguns. <laughs> it sounds like that, right? Sounds it like does. It's the, it's the mm -hmm. clamp. Mm -hmm. If you go out there, they go out there. All right, so po the Polte request for the extension of the permit for the order of conditions, you know, they made the, uh, they committed to reimbursing the homeowner for half of the fence installation, and that was really the only outstanding issue for Polte Farms North. Um, so if I can just get a, and it's going to be expiring or has expired, so I can get, just get a motion to approve that request. I'll make the motion. And a second, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. And opposed? All right. Then the MJ Keene property, Jim, did you have anything that you oh. wanted to? Yeah, so Sorry after the way we call everybody that this was an offer to donate the property to us, to the con uh, donate to the town, uh, to the Conservation Commission. And um, I looked at it, I looked into it. I thought that it was a landlocked parcel and pretty much useless. But then I realized or discovered that it's actually connected to Glen Road. I yeah. wasn't able, okay, there you go. That's so, what we talked about, yeah. The right. town owns this parcel. So the parcel, own, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. We own yeah. a parcel that goes to Glen Road plus that bigger parcel. So this would add to that. So I think Correct. that's, yeah. you know, pending a title search, that's probably a good piece of property. And there's also an Star property next to it. Right. To so Don, right yeah, to the south. Yeah. Excuse me, does it make sense to I just send so. the letter to Norman and Lane saying, you know, we support the town? Um, yeah, you know, receiving this yeah. parcel yeah. as a donation because it's got to go through. You know, has to yeah. have the total yeah. search. Because these were the comments from from uh, Ray. Ray, because I asked up front. You know, what was the what was the process? You know, so um, he sort of laid out you know, what, what he thought. You know, yeah. needed to. So uh, maybe we can so send a letter to Don with that attached. Or to Don, excuse me, to Norman. Yeah, saying the commission supports um, the act of uh, you know receiving this as a donation, pending appropriate title research and that type of thing. Jeff, so it was, they actually offered to donate it to conservation commission, right, to put it under our control. Right. We I think have control over that larger parcel, although it's kind of weirdly written, conservation and rec con. I sent that in the email. What does it show as the uh, on the 34 R3440, I'm trying to it find says, my, uh, it's right up there, isn't it? I'm trying to find my, uh, it says uh, conservation, where's my, con and rec or something, or conservation rec and con. What happened? I could have sworn I had the GIS already open. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did I yeah. close it? I had, I'm Can sorry. you do the parcel all the way on the right there? Yeah. No. Can you do the parcel number? No, I, I, I thought I had the towns, I thought I had the, I must have closed it. I thought I had the GIS open. You did? Yeah. No, I can't find it. 
But we don't have the funding to do the so, title search. But when, I guess the, my point is when they go, if we go into it to do this, we ought to probably clean up the deed to make it something resembling some committee in town. Because right now it's kind of a, an amalgamation of two committees. It's at 34. Or two uh, groups. What do you mean, two groups? Well, it says, watch, well, it brings it up. All right, so, and by the way, we own all this land on the northerly side of the right road. So go to the, no, R3440. Yeah. So, uh, so we'll click on that and then we'll get it set. So which one do you want? You R want nope. you want this one right yeah, here? Yeah, that one there. So it says, Conservation Con, period, and Rack Department, which is not some organization that even exists. It's not two more positions that exist, so it's something so, that yeah, you'd have to go that into that. the you'd have to go into the deed. Yeah, I know, I know. That. And maybe when it was done twenty years ago, that's what somebody was called. But that's what we know. But it says Town of Hopkinton. So yeah, but the, yeah, but, but, but the what's below it is who's care, custody, and control is under. Two o two. So this this property that was do that's offered to donate would be under conservation commission if we accepted that. Or it would just be under Board of Selectmen or open space. I'm just pointing out that the other property that is the town's, that this would be, is, uh, would it, is adjoining, and it's not clear who's managing that property. So. But anyway, but yeah, I would say we should, we should accept that. Uh, pending discovery of some barrel dump or something. Uh, <laughs> or a tire dump. Where has that ever happened in town? Oh, yeah. That reference is bad. Have you walked it, Jim? Um, I've gotten close, but <laughs> the answer is no. Um, I tried to actually go in from Lumber Street, uh, but I've taken a look at some aerials. It doesn't look like there's ever been anything there, or at least not in. But you can't get there, because from Lumber Street, you have to go um, through some jar that I'm not going But I tried to come in from Glen Road, but it's just it's a jungle, so mm -hmm. I'm not going in there. But it's we we also own all this, which obviously came, I would assume came from the open space. Yeah, it definitely ma Peter definitely site. makes sense to accept so it, you know, because then we have a little bit more open space from a trails perspective. So yeah. Oh yeah, so all that's right. it. Sounds good. That's it. So the question is, is how do we get the funding to do the environmental site assessment and the deed search? Um, well, that would come out of the... Uh, Talk to Elaine. Yeah, we wouldn't do it. The town would do it, right? So the town's acquiring it. And rather than being in the Board of Select, select Boards, Care, Custody, and Control would be ours. But it seems to me that the town would pay for the, the due diligence. But we have to put a wreck in to do it, I think. Some well, if you say that, if you tell Norman, Elaine, whoever that we support it, then it would be up to them to encourage it. We support it, but you know, after, with due diligence, and then I would say that they would have to do that, just like on any property, mm -hmm. whether purchasing it or receiving it as a gift. I would think that the town, not conservation. Would you mind? Would you uh, mind looking into that? Just to find out what the In, proper. Who you know, would talk to uh, Elaine? Yeah, what would find be, out? You know, tell her that you know the commission is interested in accepting it. When does uh, that mean? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, you know, how, what, what's the appropriate way to get the funding yeah. to do the? Yeah, I'll do that. Um, and how do we go about it? Okay. And then ultimately, has to go to town meeting for the selectmen to vote on it to accept the, to accept uh, the it, donation. I, believe. I guess it does. I know every article for purchasing says that, to accept by gift and la di da la di da That might be another question for. Yeah, I think that's just Does it need to go before system. town meeting? Yeah. All right. All right. And on the administrator report, Don, yeah. Peter, 32 Granite Street, yeah, they deck. came in yesterday. Uh, has, it was just it was a verbal, so I was able to do a little um, research. Uh, he wasn't sure. He, he, he's got an existing deck. He wants to um, raise it and replace it in kind, and um, he wasn't sure if he was within the commission's jurisdiction, so I found an old filing, and I just
just was able to pull this today and scan it. And now that I have you guys here, because I think he was looking to do it this weekend. So we had no filing, 188283. Here's the existing house. He's got wetlands here. He was talking about he just knew of a stream, so I don't know if the stream is, is, um, is off his property. But obviously, uh, the whole house is within uh, 100 foot, so, and there isn't, there wasn't a, um, there isn't an as-built, this was proposed, and he zoned it since whenever and always had the deck on it. So I assume that there's a deck off the back of the house. Mm -hmm. So if you got, so it would be jurisdictional, um, it would probably, what is that? So there's a deck there, and it's yeah. So it's not right yeah, now. it's not shown, but basically, it's so I'm not sure if it's going to be within 50 feet. If it was outside 50, I wouldn't even bother you. Um, but in case it's inside 50, you guys are amenable with uh, the deck coming down and him replacing it in kind. Everyone all right with that? Same Who's footprint. Looking? He's not going to put in new footings, it would seem. I'm not sure. He still has to file a building permit application, so I just coordinate with. Chuck on that, you know, but if you guys are a minimal, that's what I'm saying. So, so now you don't, I don't have to bother because he, yeah, he needs a building permit. So, yeah. if he doesn't, if he, if he doesn't yeah, get it generated this week, he's not doing it this weekend, yeah. you know. So, um, but I'm not going to be around on Friday, yeah. And, uh, I, I think that's fine. Just ask him to send us an updated plan with it sketched in so we have it for the file? That's what I would ask him to do. And so I just generated this today and he was a walk-in, so I don't even that. But I'm waiting for him to submit his building permit application so I can get his telephone number or an email. Okay. So right now it was all verbal, but I just wanted to be able to say, well, the commission's aware of it and I can move forward. Everyone okay with that? Yeah. All right, and then recommend members for open space. Yeah, I got an email um, from the town manager's office that the, um, uh, and we kind of knew this. Um, Ed's position at the open space expires in November, so I was hoping just to send them a response, and that's why I sent that email to find out if you were coming. Because <laughs> you weren't, I, we were just going to move forward without you. Want to re up? <laughs> you want to re up that? Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You guys are doing excellent work today. Do we have to vote so on that, Don? No. You usually do. Yeah, all right. I'll make a motion to appoint Ed to the Open Space Preservation Committee. For, is it a one-year term? I uh, second uh, This two. was a three. Oh, oh three. Three, three years. Three, three, so three I'm pretty term. sure it was a three. Because we did it three years ago. Eight. We did it in 2016. You want right. to give me plenty of time to wreak havoc. Can we make it six? <laughs> <laughs> I got some, hey, listen, I got some ideas on how you can wreak havoc. <laughs> So All right, a motion to adjourn the meeting. Who seconded that? Jim seconded it. Thank you. I second. Aye. Thank you. Aye. 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 Aye.